For years, Arkansas has been considered and is one of the best programs in all of college baseball. But the question is this, will this be the year of the hog as the Razorbacks seek their first national championship in program history? Hard to believe they have not hoisted that trophy yet, but maybe, just maybe, this will be the year to help us break it all down. Our good friend Andrew Ellis of Natty State Sports. He takes the time to talk all things Razorbacks baseball. Andrew, appreciate you taking the time, my man. What's going on? Absolutely, man. I'm just counting down the days till baseball season. So I appreciate you letting me let me come on and do this, man. I'm, I've been looking for anyone who will talk ball with me. So I'm just I'm I'm scout, I'm looking around the streets trying to talk hog ball. That's all I want to do, and uh, can't wait for it, man. I'm really I'm really excited. Yeah, Andrew, about two weeks away from opening day. Before we get to that, though. Natty State Sports, a new venture for you guys. Give the folks an idea of exactly what Natty State Sports is. You go to the profile, obviously, the number one place to get all of your Razorbacks content. But uh, first off, congratulations to you, John Neighbors, the entire team. You guys are doing a great job thus far. But take a moment to plug it, man. You guys are working your tail off. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Uh, well, you know John, our, our mutual friend. He's kind of the, uh, I guess, I don't know if John Neighbors being the brains behind the operation. I don't know if that's the best tagline to go with, but it's kind of it kind of started. This is his baby. He started this out, and he kind of recruited a few, me and another coworker of mine at the time, Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Bordelon, who did a great job covering the, the Hogs for a, a local website around here. He kind of recruited a little team of guys who he thought would fit his vision and his personality and kind of what we were trying to do. But it's basically we're just a digital media company, but we have written content, YouTube, podcasts, like all that. And John's, John's show daily goes four to six. And so we have all kinds. Of, we're starting to get some guests on there. We have some guests lined up for baseball season, some basketball stuff coming. So uh, we've got some really exciting stuff in the works. And I think the more that we get this thing off the ground and get rolling, people start seeing us and start realizing, like, oh, these guys are these guys are doing fun. But uh, we're hoping that we're going to be, you know, I don't know if we're going to set the world on fire or anything, but we're hoping to give somebody a little little something different for if they want to follow the Hogs, follow SEC sports. And we're kind of covering it all, man. I mean, we've talked about Sidney Sweeney, Lamar Jackson. We've talked about all kinds of topics on this on our program. So uh, we, we just try to have as much fun as we can. We've got this nice space to make, make use of. And so uh, we're having a good time. Man. So I appreciate you uh, giving us some love. Yeah, Andrew, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, first thing I'll ask you is this. Is there any fan base in the SEC – that needs a good baseball season more than Arkansas? Well, I'll tell you, you know, from the outside looking in, I'm sure some people look at Arkansas baseball's program and they're like, oh, you know, they've had a great run under Dave Van Horn, all these Omaha appearances. They almost won the title a few times. Like, it's been a great time. But like you mentioned, Arkansas fans kind of need this because they haven't been able to enjoy it as much as you would think because that elusive national title just still hasn't come. And so it almost makes it hard to enjoy any success in baseball. Like, even last year's team that won the SEC regular season title and was number three overall seed, had a disappointing finish. And so it kind of ruins the whole season. And I feel, you know, it's kind of tough from that perspective, but then when you throw in the fact that the football team sucks, the basketball team has imploded and a little bit and one last night against Missouri, but it's not really been the season many hoped it was. And so now everybody's kind of looking at the baseball team. And they're like, are you going to, you going to do your part here? Or are you going to save us here? But I don't know, you know, Arkansas fans are also like a tortured fan base. So I, you know, even when I try to share excitement about this baseball team, they're like, Oh, they suck. They're going to suck too. It's going to be a disappointment. They'll have a guy get hurt. And, and you know, people they they're like on edge. They're like a they're like a battered dog that's scared to scared to, scared of its owner. You know, it's they're they're uh it's interesting. But yeah, I, our, that's the good way to put it is Arkansas fans need this baseball season to just be normal. Just be a normal, just get to Omaha, be one of the better teams in the country. You don't even have to win it all, but just be normal, be you know, do what you're supposed to do and we'll see what they do. But I have a lot of faith in this team, and so I'm excited to uh, get into it. Andrew, it really speaks to Dave Van Horn, the job he's done, when you say be normal, and that's getting to Omaha, and it's exactly. like it's no big deal when, I mean, there's obviously tons of clubs out there that would dream of getting to Omaha. That's become a normal season in Fayetteville, but what's the mood and the vibe, I guess, of Razorbacks fans around Dave Van Horn? Been there for over 20 years. He's one of the greatest skippers of all time. Um, like you mentioned, no national championship, but I, I think what's interesting, too, what you said is that it's almost gotten to a point to where it's like the regular season isn't even fun anymore because yeah. if you don't finally break through and win the national title, then what did you really do? But that's a dangerous spot to fall in as a fan base, man. And that's a that's a tough spot for a head coach where you're like, you go into every season, if I don't win a national championship, we didn't have a successful year. And that's how it's going to be viewed. But overall, I mean, I'd have to imagine the approval rating for Dave Van Horn still really high, one of the best in the business. But like, 
is there any pressure starting to mount or I mean is there start chatter starting that hadn't been there before necessarily so I would say for for sure unanimous approval like there's not nobody legitimate that I've ever talked to whether it's in someone connected to the program or a real fan of the program nobody actually wants like it has any issue with David Horn but you know there is definitely some pressure that is mounted and that's a product of the success they've had you know and Part of it also just is the longevity and where, you know, Arkansas, he takes Dave, he, or Dave Van Horn takes Arkansas to the College World Series in 2004. At the time, it was like his second year. And it's like, oh, man, it's like you're ahead of schedule. This is awesome. They go back in 09 and 12, 15. And some of those teams at the time were just kind of lucky to be there, if I'm being honest. Like the 2015 team in general, like they had Andrew Benatendi, but they went 15 and 15 in SEC. I would say the last – since 2018, when they – you know, when the fly ball happened and they lose to Oregon State – that season, though, since then, I'd say the program has gone up a different level where they were having consistent success before, but they went back-to-back Omaha in 2018, 2019, 2021. They were number one all year, uh, 2022, get back to Omaha. So I'd say this last five or six years, it's ramped up a little bit where the program has gotten a little bit more on that elite level, on that national level. They've recruited at an elite level. They have the talent. There's no excuses at this point. And, I, and excuses is a, is a harsh term here. Like, if you win the national title, you don't need to have an excuse. I mean, you're, you're among 350 teams that did the same thing. But, uh, yeah, it is, and it's just tough when you look around the SEC and you have the entire divisions winning titles. LSU just won one last year, Ole Miss the year before, Mississippi State, uh, Vanderbilt's had plenty. And so you just look around the SEC at all these programs that Arkansas compares themselves to and view, views themselves as next to or even better than in some cases. And they don't have that chip to kind of back it up and to validate all of this the success they've had under Dave Van Horn and, Look, I don't think it's going to be like a Mike Martin situation where we're going to have to wonder when Dave's 90 is like, oh, so he just is not going to happen or whatever. I have a hard time believing they're not going to get over that hump at some point, whether it's this year, next year, just in the next five to ten uh, so many times. But I, I do wonder, you know, like you said, what what that looks like if, you know, we have this great run with Dave Van Horn and then it never really culminates with a title. I think that'll be an interesting discussion for the fan base to have. But I think at the at least right now, still the utmost – respect and everyone everyone loves dbh and they, and they should love dbh regardless um but i do think it'll it'll leave a little bit of a weird taste if they are never able to get over that hump and so uh, hog fans will start getting antsy here in the next couple of years for sure and, and to your point andrew you know baseball is such a it can really torture you from the standpoint of it's it's not like football where most of the time the team that has the best players and is the best they win it all I mean, in baseball, you got to get hot at the right time. There's so many different variables, right, that can take place. I mean, we've seen great teams not even make it to Omaha. And so you just think about this year's team. And I mean, you know, I, I just feel like forever. I mean, I, I I I was doing my baseball preview, and I'm like, I've been asking myself, is it the year of the hog? I've probably asked myself that like five or six times. Like, okay, is this is and, – and every year I hear people say the same thing that I really respect, whether it be with D1 baseball or whoever it is, talk about – they're going to get one eventually. They're, it's it's like we just say yeah. that for a year, and I'm like, well, when is eventually? I mean, you know, is it, right. is it, and it, but it's hard to believe that it won't happen um, under the leadership of Dave Van Horn. Looking at this year's team, Andrew, let's go ahead and dive into that. It's going to start with pitching. Pitching staff's a great place to start with this team. It's going to be one of the best, if not the best, in college baseball. Hagen Smith might be the best ace in all of college baseball. He's going to be, of course, the Friday guy. You got Brady Tigert on Saturday and then Mason Molina, which here's a crazy stat that people don't realize, maybe don't realize. Mason Molina was the Friday guy at Texas Tech. He's going to be the Sunday guy at Arkansas. And his number, 6-2 and two last year, a 3-6-7 ERA in 16 games starting. And Texas Tech is a great program, very, very good program. Uh, the depth of the pitching staff is incredible. Just talk about for a moment that pitching staff. And, I mean, that's got to be one certainly that when you talk about chasing a national championship, having an elite staff like that led by an ace by Hagen Smith, that's a great place to start. Well, and, you know, everybody wants to talk about how, how high is your ceiling? Oh, what can I, what can we accomplish? I think Arkansas's floor is very high. Just because when you have three starters like that, like a Hagen Smith, who you're going to get six innings out of each week, Brady Tiger, when he's, you know, when he's cooking, he's one of the better pitchers and best stuff in the country. You can get five, six out of him. If you're looking at 18 to 20 innings a weekend out of those three guys, Mason Molina, who – I don't know if I've seen Mason Molina give up a run in all these scrimmages I've been going to of fall, preseason, spring. Like, I've seen him pitch five or six times. I don't know if I've seen him give up a run. He's just a dude. And the mix of skill sets in that pitching staff, you know, Hagan's kind of a high, you know, 100-mile-an-hour lefty who's kind of a come-right-at-you, a power pitcher. 
Molina, the lefty, who's going to mix it up a little bit, kind of with the craft, but he's a, a tough challenge in his own regard. And then Tiger just has the most unique set of skill. Like his his stuff is, I'm not saying it's the best in the country, but just with his fastball, that's not like a blow you away fastball with his curveball slider. He's mixing in a change up. And they, they all these guys have these new different arsenals. It's like, it's not just three big time arms that you got to face. It's three completely different challenges. And so I just think weekend to weekend, I don't, I, you know, if, if those guys stay healthy, I don't see weekends where Arkansas is just going to get beat and just swept by somebody or so it's, I think it teams are going to have to really earn wins against them. And, you know, the bullpen, I'd say, if this team had a question mark, it might be the bullpen just because you don't have a full or for sure, like a Matt Cronin type lockdown closer or a Kevin cops who, you know, you're going to at the end of the game. And, that might evolve throughout the year, but right now they've got a few different options. Will McIntyre is like the redshirt senior, the soft throwing righty who just kind of has a rubber arm, and he might end up being kind of the key to this pitching staff in terms of the bullpen. Because I think he covers a lot of woes and is the guy they'll kind of just win in doubt. They'll call on Will McIntyre. You're going to hear his name so much if you watch Arkansas because he might pitch twice a week. He might pitch two innings on Friday, one on Saturday, two on Sunday. Like they're going to use him and run him into the ground, but uh. They have so many talented freshmen on this pitching staff that, I mean, Gabe Gackle's a guy, a true freshman, big time talent. Hunter Dietz is, might not be ready for the start of the season. Lefty as talented as anyone. So there's, I mean, the names, we could go through all the freshman class. I mean, they're, they're, it's basically the perfect game, top 100. They have like 12 of them. Uh, and so it's like, there's plenty of options, but I like that they're not going to be dependent on. You're not asking these freshmen to come in and be that guy. You've got those guys in Will McIntyre and Hagan Smith and Brady Tiger and Mason Molina. And so I hope that, uh, you know, they have a nice little mix of, of, of talent to where they're not going to depend on one area too much. But I think it all starts with that starting rotation, and it kind of, like I said, raises the floor. Like, I just don't see a way this this team is not at least pretty good with that starting pitching. We haven't even talked about the offense, which I think is going to end up being pretty good, and we'll kind of cover them when they're down. And, Andrew, you mentioned Mason Molina, transfer from Texas Tech. Arkansas did work in the transfer portal as well, right? Hudson White, Jack Wagner – uh, Aloy from Sacramento State, Wills Meyer from Azu. Just talk about that transfer portal hall. How do you feel Arkansas did? Again, it's going to be a big part of their success because right now, projected lineup, four starters are from the portal and your Sunday guy from the portal as well. Well, it's so funny. You know, we we, we might have to start talking. If Arkansas wins the national title this year, we might have to say the, the best way to win the title is to just not go to Omaha the year before. Because you remember LSU two years ago, they, they get bounced in the regional – and all of a sudden, their transfer portal class is great. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think those extra two weeks where you're able to get out in front and build that relationship with Hudson White and with Mason Molina and kind of get on the ground there. Uh, you know, Tommy White, LSU had him locked down before anybody could even really – Arkansas was still playing, I believe. So, it's like, there. you know, it's, there's kind of a benefit. If you get bounced early, it's like you, you got to hit it hard. And Arkansas certainly did that. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is last year's team, they had a little bit of a gap at shortstop and catcher. If you compare them to normal Arkansas teams, they did not have a Jalen Battles. They didn't have a Michael Turner or Casey Opitz. It was just not a position of strength, and they went ahead and fixed that right away. That Vahiva Lloyd kid from Hawaii, or he's from Sacramento State, from the state of Hawaii, or, yeah, he's a, he's special, man. And he, he hit like 370 as a freshman at Sacramento State, so there will be a little bit of an adjustment in terms of what he's seeing. But, I mean, he's hit 12 home runs this offseason, and they haven't scrim They scrimmage like once a week every now and then. They probably He's probably got a – a decent sample size of at bats, but people don't hit 12, 12 home runs in the offseason typically. I mean, that's a lot considering you're only playing a few games here and there in the fall, and it's not a ton. He's been he's been outstanding. Uh Hudson White, you know, it's interesting because I looked at his defensive numbers when he committed and he was splitting time at Texas Tech, wasn't their everyday catcher. And I was wondering, like, man, is he really gonna be the everyday guy? But shout out to Bobby Werners because he really coaches the Arkansas catchers up a little bit. Every guy they bring in takes an immediate jump as a catcher. And so Hudson White. He's a guy that's gotten a ton of draft buzz. He's a junior. They have a freshman, Ryder Helfrich, who's uh, not a transfer, but he's kind of competing with Hudson White for that catcher job, and they weren't really expecting that to happen. They didn't even know if they would get Ryder Helfrich to campus, which is why they went and got Hudson White. So now they've got a little bit of an embarrassment of Richards at catcher, and uh, I think when you look at this this team, yeah, you're right. The, the transfer portal, it, it's, it's a bigger haul than they had last year. Last year they leaned on a lot of JUCO guys, some of which ended up going well for them. Like Caleb Cowley was an awesome bat for them, and, Jared Wagner was a big transfer they got, but it wasn't like top to bottom. They re reloaded. And I feel like this year they really took it seriously, put a point of emphasis, got out early on the recruiting trail. And I love this transfer class. And uh, like I said, it, like with the pitching staff, it's a nice mix of talent. And uh, this lineup, we can, we can dive into some of the pieces of it, uh, but they, they have some re returners with like Peyton Stovall and Kendall Diggs who are kind of setting the tone and then these talented transfers. And so 
like like most years, Arkansas is as talented as anyone. It's just a matter of if they're going to make it happen. I mean, but you look around the country, and there's a lot of teams that are in that same kind of category. I mean, LSU's got dudes, Florida's got dudes, and Tennessee's got dudes. So it's like you, it's it's like I feel good about Arkansas's pieces, but then I look around the SEC and I'm like, oh, but they got this guy, they got this guy, and so. But I feel good about what Arkansas's got. But uh, I think the shortstop and catcher Hudson White and, and Vahiva Loy are kind of the frontliners of this transfer class that are going to be the ones people learn about real quick. Andrew, you mentioned the lineup and the offensive identity. I'm curious to get your thoughts on that because you see a couple of these transfer portal pieces, 15 home runs, 14 home runs. You got Kendall Diggs returning who hit 12 home runs a season ago. You've also got a nice mix, I think, though, of speed, athleticism. So when you look at this Arkansas lineup, do you think it's it's going to be power? Is it going to be more speed? Is it going to be small ball? Is it going to be kind of a mix of all that? What do you expect the identity to be this season? So it's interesting. Every offseason, I feel like we do this thing with Arkansas and other teams where we're like, oh, maybe they won't be as much power based, you know, because all these teams in the SEC have a ton of power and they hit home runs. And Arkansas has kind of been in that list of, of teams that almost live and die with the home run. <laughs> I don't I would love to sit here and tell you, nah, they're going to be bunting. They're going to be moving guys over. They're going to when they get in the SEC and they face dudes throwing 98, it's just really hard to play that way. It's really hard to string together multiple hits in a row. And so I think you see some of these teams kind of revert into that, all right, is it a little bit home run and bust to try to draw a walk? Uh, I, I don't think Arkansas is going to go in there trying to hit home runs, but I look at this roster. Vahiva Loy, I just mentioned, he's going to do a lot of damage with the bat, and he might hit 300, but every time he gets out, it will be a strikeout. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't he, – he's not afraid to strike out. I'll just say that. And uh, but you look at – there's some other pieces on the team, like Jason Jones is a kid, super talented. Uh, last year's class was one of the top freshmen in his class. Wasn't an everyday starter last year. They're hoping he can win that left field job. If he wins the job, he's going to do a lot of damage and be in that 12 to 15 home run range, but he's also going to strike out a bunch. But, you know, I think there's some pieces on this team that are capable of being a little bit more well-rounded, like a Peyton Stovall or Kendall Diggs, who have a little bit of a contact-based approach. They still have power, but they're, they're, they're not going to strike out as much. Uh, Ty Wilmsmeyer, the transfer from Missouri in center field, he might be the fastest player on the team. So maybe they're hoping he can, re he, he can fill up some of that. But, I mean, you look at last year's outfield with Jared Wagner, Tavian Josenberger, and, and uh, Jace Borfin. I think that's like 35, 40 home runs between those three guys. So it's like, I would love to say, hey, Arkansas, yeah, maybe they switch up their identity, but they've got a lot of power production, a lot of RBIs to replace. And so I think uh, having guys like the Heva and Hudson White, who may strike out a little bit, but are going to do that damage at the plater, it's still a necessary trade off. And so, and when you get in the SEC, you're facing dudes that are throwing 98. All these guys are going to strike out a ton. So it's like when you face Hagen Smith and your team strikes out nine times, I don't think you can blame that on the hitting coach. <laughs> Andrew, looking at your bio on X, I, I love the glue guy spark plug. That's yeah. what you have for yourself, the description. Who would be the glue guy and spark plug for this Arkansas team this year? It, this is the easiest question you've asked me. Peyton Holt is the glue guy spark plug for this team. If you go to any practice game or scrimmage of Arkansas, you will hear Peyton Holt's voice. You'll see him bouncing around the dugout. And, you know, he's a guy that got thrown into the lineup when Peyton Stovall went down with an injury last year. So he was kind of the backup second baseman who got thrust into action. He's from Greenwood, Arkansas, which is the hometown of Tyler Wilson and Drew Morgan and Connor Nolan and a few other like Razorback. It's like Razorback royalty comes from this random small town in, in Arkansas. So he's from there. So his, he's got that like Arkansas DNA that the fans love. And so he's a huge fan favorite the way he plays. I mean, he, he makes play. I mean, the other day in a scrimmage, he did the thing where like the, the pitcher was walking back to the mound and turned his back to him and he stole home on him. He just is doing stuff like that, even in scrimmages and, like, walkthroughs. Like, he's that guy who's on 10 100% of the time. And, you know, he had an awesome year down the stretch last year, and it looks like he's going to end up starting at third base. And so he's not like a household name. I think that he's maybe the Cade Beloso of this team. You remember what LSU had last year with a guy who wasn't like a front-line draft pick. They had all this talent, all these guys. But there were a lot of games last year down the stretch where Cade Beloso was the one who kind of got LSU going. I think Peyton Holden, if there's a guy who's going to do that for Arkansas this year, it would be him. Andrew, you mentioned so many of the talented freshmen that Arkansas added to their roster. Who's a couple of guys do you think that right now, at least the folks that don't follow Arkansas baseball day in, day out like you do, who are some guys that are unknowns that you think could become superstars by season's end? I'll tell you, I don't know if I can consider – I mentioned Ryder Helfrick's name earlier. I don't know if I can consider him an unknown if he was like a top 50 prospect in his class, but I think nationally – He's going to end up being a frontline name, maybe not even this year. It might take him a little. He's going to end up catching a good bit, splitting with Hudson White a little bit. He might might DH some, but James or James McCann does that name ring a bell? Dave Van Horn 
compared him to – he said he's a James McCann who's better hitting as a freshman than James McCann was when he came to Arkansas. So I didn't throw that comparison around. That came straight from Dave Van Horn. So if this kid sucks, blame him, not me. <laughs> uh, but I've been watching Ryder Helfrich this offseason. He hit an oppo home run the other day where, like, he didn't even square it up, and he still hit it 104 off the bat oppo out of the park. And so – He's just doing stuff like that as a freshman where you can kind of tell he's got that that next level DNA. And I mean, if you're getting James McCann comparisons, that's something something interesting. You know, I mentioned that Arkansas's catcher. It's a it's 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 gone from a position of weakness to where they have two guys that I think they would feel very comfortable with starting every day. And they'll probably mix them around a little bit. But Ryder Helfrick, I think, is the front line name. And then Hunter Dietz and Gabe Gackle on the mound, I would say, are the two arms that have the best chance to come right in right away and have a big role in this pitching staff. And with the pitchers, you could probably just pick a name out of a hat. There's like nine guys that are all similarly ranked, similar stuff, 94 to 96. You know, it's like you just – I we haven't seen them pitch in the SEC yet, so I don't want to pump any of them up before they go out there. But uh, I think Arkansas has got plenty. But Ryder Helfrick is – if there's one name people that aren't related to Arkansas should know, it's Ryder Helfrick. Andrew was just taking a look at the schedule for Arkansas this season. And, of course, when you're in the SEC, the schedule is going to be difficult every year. But really intrigued, of course, by the uh, the college baseball series at Globe Life Field with Arkansas, Oregon State, Oklahoma State, and Michigan. That will be a ton of fun. Must-see TV, of course, Oregon State, one of the top-ranked teams in college baseball. Uh, you look at the SEC slate, though. One thing I noticed, Andrew, we'll just run through these. Missouri at home, at Auburn. LSU at home, Ole Miss at home, at Alabama. How about two games against Texas Tech, by the way? I just noticed uh, in Fayetteville Tuesday and Wednesday, April 16th and 17th. Uh, at South Carolina, Florida at home, at Kentucky, Mississippi State at home, at a and I-, I go through that, Andrew, to say that it feels like at least – I mean, again, there's no such thing as an easy schedule. I want to talk to you in a second about just the overall depth of the SEC, and it's crazy how good it is, but I mean – a lot of those series are in Fayetteville. A lot of them are at Baum. I feel like when it comes to favorable SEC schedule, this one's about as favorable as it gets from the standpoint of at least you're playing a lot of your toughest series at the friendly confines. Yeah, I would agree. And, I mean, opening with Missouri also, I mean, at home, that's as good as it gets. So, it's like if Arkansas doesn't start 3-0, it's kind of on them. Uh, but, yeah, I agree. Arkansas had a weird schedule where it's like Ole Miss, LSU, Mississippi State, it's year on, year off. They either go to them or have them all at home, which is cool in the year that you have them at home. But it's like it's kind of tough some years to go on the road. So they've, it's been the opposite where I'm like, man, Arkansas got it back when they were really good. It's like at Ole Miss, at LSU. But, yeah, I agree. Getting those teams at home, getting Florida at home, like that's obviously not going to be an easy series. But if you're going to play some of those top, team, top teams, you'd rather do it. And, like, a road trip to Auburn is not an easy one. But it's like if you're going to go on the road in the SEC, that's probably the environment you'd like. Um, when I hear you read that, it just makes me think of how much fun we're going to have at Bob Walker this year. And so I think that that's what sticks out to me when you read those is like, man, it's going to be fun. And I think Arkansas is going to be on a national spotlight more than ever. Uh, I mean, they're always one of the more talked about teams, but I think this year more than ever having LSU at home, having Tennessee or playing Tennessee or playing Florida at home, like those, those are going to be series that everyone's looking at it. So and that excites me. And, you know, we've, we've talked in years past about how like the regular season almost doesn't matter. It's like, I think also that's another factor. Arkansas won the SEC last year and didn't make it out of the regional. Fans are weird. So now they're going to be like, if we have a chance to win the title, we we might as well just not do it. Uh, people are going to be weird about that stuff. So I think that it helps that there's not that pressure of like, oh, if they fall, if they're seven and six in SEC, they got to get it going. Like, I think fans know it's kind of postseason or bust. And so it'll make it more easy to enjoy those games. But I, I agree, like just listening to it on paper, it sounds like sounds like Arkansas has got a chance to to be in good spot there in the SEC. Andrew, before we get you out of here, man, SEC outlook from the standpoint of Arkansas, of course, going to be one of the top teams in the conference. Six teams are ranked in the preseason top nine, preseason top 25 rankings. Alabama's in the top 20. South Carolina rounds it out at 25. Auburn's a team every year that it seems like is underrated. They're somehow outside of the top 25. Uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State aren't ranked. What do they do? Do they come back from the dead? Your just overall thoughts on the SEC as a whole, not necessarily asking you to to break down every team, but when it comes to, like, Arkansas has the same goal as many other teams in the SEC, it's very crowded at the top. Who are some of those other teams you're looking at as, like, you know, when you look at the outlook of the league, like, these are going to be really fun series or just really great challenges for this Arkansas team to overcome? Well, you know, we mentioned they have Florida at home. I think that has to be – the main one. Now, I've always hated LSU my whole life. 
my best friend played at LSU and I still hated LSU. I still cheered against my best friend whenever he would play against Arkansas because I hate LSU that much. So that series is always going to be fun. And they're going to, the Tigers are going to be loaded once again. All these teams have talent. It's weird. Like when I look at, when I compare and contrast Arkansas two teams like Florida and LSU, they're there at the top with them. I like the way Arkansas matches up. And I think I'm like, you know what? I think Arkansas, I like them, especially if they're getting them at home. I would take Arkansas over them. But then you mentioned some of those teams down the line, like an AM or like an Auburn, who seem to overachieve every year. Mm-hmm. And you just read through the list. I mean, even like Georgia just hired Wes Johnson. Like the SEC is deeper than ever. And it seems like there's not really an easy weekend. Mm-hmm. So as much as we look at the schedule and we're like, oh, it kind of lines up well, you get your toughest challenge, challenges at home. It's like going on the road at Auburn does suck. Mississippi State, you know, they, they we'll see what they look like. Them and Ole Miss, I think we're all kind of waiting to to see if they're really, if the program is going to show any life after they kind of, Seems like they got their cha- their championship and they're just out now. Uh, but I, I'd expect Ole Miss and Mississippi State both to be improved. I just don't expect those programs to stay down long. So, yeah, it's like I look at down the line, I'm like, man, some of these teams at the bottom might creep up on you a little bit more. Not that those teams are going to win the national title, but I just feel like week to week, it's going to be very easy to get caught in the SEC. And uh, A&M is kind of the team that I, n- I never know what to expect. a and is just a weird program, a weird school in general. Uh, but it's Schlossnagel, man. I really, I really trust that guy and I really respect what he's done. And, you know, I feel like they had a disappointing year last year. So I'll be excited to see how they respond. Uh, but yeah, I just look down the line. There's more depth than ever. And these coaches, the coaching is getting better. I mean, the fact that Tony Vitello is the head coach at Tennessee and Wes Johnson is the head coach at Georgia just tells you like how deep this conference is in terms of the overall talent and the coaching. And so there's not an easy weekend. So I, I look around the SEC and I just think it's going to be chaotic and they're going to beat each other up like they do every year. And, You'll have some team that's like 14 and 16 struggling to get into the tournament, and they might win the whole damn thing. It's just kind of how this thing works. And so there's nothing more fun to follow than SEC baseball. I mean, people always talk about parity, and that's a good word that we like to say. SEC baseball actually has parity, and so that's what really makes it fun. And the personalities and the, and the stars, man, I can't wait. I'm just, just talking about it gets me psyched up. Andrew, to your point, it's the only sport where the best team in the game can lose a Tuesday night to McNeese, right? I mean, it just exactly it, they can lose to Presbyterian College. It makes no sense, but it is. It's why we love it, truly. Uh, Andrew, if Arkansas is going to win it all, what's the one thing in your mind that has to click? Is it as simple as the baseball gods have to smile on Arkansas baseball? Because a lot of times, like the ball has to bounce your way in this game, but like, is there one thing you look at? They've got all the talent. They've got the right coach. Is there one thing you look at and say, okay, if this comes together the right way, if this clicks, if this happens, this could be the year? Yeah, you know, I think a little bit of it is that luck and that getting the baseball gods to smile down on you. But for me, it comes down to the sophomore class for Arkansas. You know, and we always talk about the freshmen. We always talk about the returners and who the, the veterans. But I think there's a, there's a little window there. I'm looking at Jason Jones, who I mentioned earlier, who's trying to battle for the left field job. Gage Woods, a guy who closed games for Arkansas last year, struggled down the stretch. I want to see how he responds. He's another sophomore. We've got a few other arms like Parker Coyle, Ben Bybee, Christian Fouch, Cooper Dossett. A lot of arms who are in that, like, are they going to take the jump? Are they going to really be a guy? There's a lot of X factors in that sophomore class. And so I think if this sophomore class takes the step they should take, you know, being talented guys going to another year, I think that's that's going to raise the ceiling of what this team can do because I feel good about the pieces that we know. I feel very good about. I think there's a lot of you look around the diamond. There's not a ton of question marks, and I wouldn't even consider these guys to be question marks. But I would say that I think this team is going to go as high as they can. So if Gage Wood is really the one that I'm really looking at, where if he he becomes Arkansas's closer and they don't have to worry about that anymore, it makes me feel really good about this team because I feel good about the pieces, the starters, and a lot of the high level front line guys, but I feel like there's just a few things that I need to see to make me feel a little bit more comfortable seeing some of those sophomores take that jump forward and Gage Wood and Jason Jones in particular, if Arkansas can get their left fielder and their closer solid solved soon, I think uh, the list of question marks dwindles real quick. And so I I think that's kind of what's going to make or break this season. Andrew, I got one last thing for you and I can't get you out of here without asking this. It's not Arkansas baseball related. Is Eric Musselman leaving? <laughs> the craziness, by the way, on Hog Twitter and the last like 24, 48 hours. I a lot of content, a lot of content, but uh a lot of content and weird content. Uh, yeah. uh and content and where it's like second well, part of that question, do Arkansas and Missouri hate each other as much in baseball as they do? Because like that's a hatred that I don't know that folks really understand, but like yeah. just taking a peek on social media, there's some 
it, it's it's nasty. It's nasty. Arkansas fans try to pretend like Missouri's not a rival. And like, look, I grew up an Arkansas fan. I never cared about Missouri until like a decade ago. They're a rival. Let's just admit it. They we hate them. Like they hate us. Like Missouri and Arkansas, they are rivals. Um, but no, in baseball, weirdly enough, I don't I don't even think Missouri knows they have a baseball team. Uh I was actually talking to Phil Elson, who does radio. He's like the voice of the Arkansas Razorbacks for baseball. I was talking to him about going to Como because he had to go for women's basketball. And I was like, I bet you have a lot of great memories there. For some reason, Arkansas always goes in March when it's like miserable. So uh, I think Arkansas fans hate Missouri baseball for that. But I, it, in terms of the teams, I don't even, Missouri has not figured out they have a baseball team yet. So when they do, maybe they'll hate Arkansas. But until now, until then, we're just kind of chilling. But uh, yeah, Eric Musselman, though. I would, if I were a betting man, I just, I would not bet on him staying at Arkansas. When he got hired, you look at his resume and you're like, all right, he was at this place for two years, this place for two, three years. He coached in Cuba. He moved here for four years. It's like, it's not a guy who likes to stay and hang out for a long time. So I think it would have been unrealistic for anyone to be like, hey, he's dying a Razorback. This guy who moves around and is from the West Coast and has no ties to the university. He just wants to live in Fayetteville forever. I'm not naive enough to think that. Will it be this offseason? Given the direction that things have been, I mean, they won, they, they, they beat Missouri last night, so maybe this program is on its way back. But there's been so much crazy stuff thrown around. I think, uh, I think if that USC job opens up, I'll have a hard time believing he's not going to be very interested in moving to the West Coast. There you have it, Andrew Ellis, Natty State Sports. Y'all check him out. Andrew, keep up the great work. Y'all do a great job. Yeah, and again, cannot wait for open today, my friend. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, anytime. We'll, we'll, we'll kick it whenever. And uh, come get down to Fayetteville. We'll have we'll have a, we'll yeah. have a good time if you come down. I got to gotta check out Baum Walker. Never have. That's on my bucket list. So we'll get down. Baum Walker and Natty State Studios. That, those are your two stops. We'll, we got you covered.